Thank you for joining us this morning on Off the Press. And we have Tunde Kola Wale, uh, who joins us this morning to bring great insight on the headlines on the front pages of the National Dailies. Tunde Kola Wale, thank you for joining us. Good morning, my sister. All right, then. Thanks for having me. All right, so Kofi is also here. Good morning, Tunde Kola Wale. Uh, it's a privilege, a great one to have you join us again this morning. Nice to hear your voice, too. Okay, let's, uh, let's start off with the Punch newspaper. This morning, the Punch says, 10 billion naira nomination fee scandal. IU chairs stormy meeting, orders National Working Council members pro. Uh, that's very interesting. Underneath, National Deputy Chair, five orders may face a disciplinary panel of a 122 million naira refund PDP chair should also be investigated over controversial housing allowance neck members. And drama's BOT Rivers Governor meeting ends in deadlock. I use eight tackles candidates for uh, it's a lot that's going on. Some people think that you know the PDP has sorted out their issues and their houses and is together. NNPC gross profit to 674 billion naira asset hits in 16 trillion naira. Federal government sues Meta over illegal ads and demands 30 billion naira. Uh, we're talking about Facebook here, just in case you have forgotten. Asu Knox Ngige over factional groups registration. Three scientists win Nobel Prize for breakthrough in quantum physics. Uh, just before we move away, Kanu must die in detention. I take that again. Kanu mustn't die in detention. Ozakame rides Buhari. And 150 persons killed during Ikoyi prison attack, according to the witness. Hoodlums attack APC rally in Ibadan, injures supporters. And NDA convocation. Vice President Yemi Osibadro advocates local manufacturing of arms and ammunition. That's the much we can take this morning on the punch. All right, let's take uh, the next paper that happens to be The Nation and uh, interesting headlines coming on the front page of The Nation newspaper. And a big one, uh, the paper is focusing on the PDP situation. Uh, the headline there, PDP crisis, BOT's uh, move to unite Atiku Wike collapses. Uh, it's quite an interesting one going out there uh, at the People's Democratic Party. The writer to that headline, Wabara takes Rivers Governor's position to PDP leadership. Why I wanted live coverage of Parley. I'm sure that is uh, what they say. Wabara, the new BOT chairman, which was a move to try and assuage the feelings of the southern members of the PDP. Federal government registers ASU's breakaway faction corner. We'll look at that in a major discussion this morning. World Bank predicts 1% reduction in Nigeria's growth. Uh, Nigeria owes NNPCL 1.3 trillion naira, carry alleges, right, in NNPCL, uh, with, uh, that is not so limited in terms of the way it, it behaves. <laughs> Police commissioner case dismissal of seven officers. Pay rise coming for Lagos workers. So, oh, Lou, uh, I'm sure this will be a template, maybe replicated in other states. Tuno Kale will tell us more. 2023 budget, federal government projects 3.7% GDP, 17% inflation uh, are some of the headlines on the front page of the nation. Looking at a picture of the Lagos state governor, Samolu, Babajide Samolu, um, when he paid a visit to civil servants, courtesy call to the head of the civil service in Lagos State. And of course, he's taking a selfie with civil servants in Lagos State. Amazing, amazing. Also, a picture of the Ogun State Governor, yeah, the man that uh, Bola Betilbu called the LA, um, with a, in, a, in a picture with a champion, world champion, uh, 100 meter hurdles, uh, Toby and Musa. These are the stories on the front page of the nation. Well, we'll move away from the nation. We'll have the Guardian newspaper strike. Federal government weakens ASU, registers rival union. <laughs> I mean, the way the Guardian captions it, quite interesting. There are several writers. Bajabi Amila presents ASU's recommendation to Buhari. Another meeting tomorrow for final outcome. That's the first writer you find. 
Nasu Sanu members receive September salaries. Federal government silent on understanding wages. Governments may pay outstanding uh, salaries of new union. Hmm. Uh, that's what the new faction is quoted to say. We are committed to advancement of varsity education. I will not dignify uh, the C-O-N-U-A. Uh, that's the new faction. With a response, says Asu President. Buhari, Asu complicates in varsity's corruption. This right as you find underneath the bold headline. NMPC announces second profit of 674 billion naira as asset hits 16.27 trillion. Again, a PDP BOT meeting with WK ends in deadlock. Three killed, 20 trucks burned to soldiers attack uh, during protests, protesting Delta youths. Three killed and 20 trucks burned to soldiers attack protesting Delta youths. That's what you find. A youth take over Rivers community, banished chief for purportedly taking bribe from Shell. Uh, that's the company. Sean Wolu announces salary increase for workers. Uh, the picture shows a lot of celebration, jubilation right there. And that's it on the Guardian newspaper. Last week for this morning, we have this day and some interesting headlines uh, on the front page of the paper. In Mayfield, rise in disruptive banking technology is disturbing, he says. Rise in disruptive banking technology is disturbing. I wonder how that statement will affect the markets. Um, because the statement of people like in Mayfield, uh, they don't speak anyhow. Um, he says the post deposit taking fintechs must be capitalized with 25 billion naira, uh, curtail potential threats from financial technology companies, otherwise, uh, others rather, Ahmed charges uh, regulators. Uh, banking crisis may have contagion effects, NDIC warns. World Bank, Nigeria's economic growth continues to suffer from underperforming all sector. Hales country's apex bank's uh, interventions, lowest GDP pro projection to 33%, or is it 3.3%? Okay. Uh, NNPCL, oil theft, vandalism, putting Nigeria in terrible situation, advocates capital punishment for offenders, uh, justifies engagement of non-state actors in pipeline surveillance contract. Hmm. Uh, and the paper has some headlines that we've already uh, uh, talked about. Um, Buhari accuses us of corruption as FG registers two new varsity-based unions. Uh, Aisha Buhari, my husband, suffered from PTSD for many years. Uh, she's been talking since she was given that uh, position in the campaign of the APC. Uh, for the second time in 45 years, NNPCL declares profit, rakes in 60, 674 Billion naira after tax revenues. All right, hooray! Should we say hooray to that? Anyway, let's bring to Nicola Kola at this point without wasting too much time. I think, uh, we, as usual, uh, customarily, we'll start off with what's going on in the People's Democratic Party. Uh, to Nicola Wale, good morning once again. Your thoughts on this uh, alleged collapse of the talks between the Board of Trustees led by Senator Adolfo Sunwabara and uh, Ian Sunwiki? He's gone back to Abuja with nothing in his hand except WK's position. Over to you, sir. Uh, it should give uh, all these noble Nigerians uh, a lot of concern, a breakdown of uh, the attempt to really bring peace to the PDP. Because like I've always said, when the PDP, which appears to be the most uh, viable alternative to the APC, is having this kind of challenge, what we have seen could be said to be that uh, come 2023, Nigeria will be faced with a, a fate accomplished in which there is only one single or two political parties from which to choose from. And I think a good democracy should not be too reliant on just one or two viable political parties. So I would appeal to the BDP people to please bury the archives bury their personal ambition and their higher goals and solve the problems uh, uh, within them. For Governor Wike, I keep saying this, each time, and for, 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 
as long as we can continue to drag this issue with the PDP, he is in a way undermining his own political future. Governor Wike is still a young man who has a lot I mean, in front of him. He could still be vice president. He could still be the president of this country if he plays his uh, card right. But this uh, do or die affair, this attempt to pull down the roof over the head of everybody simply because of a personal ambition does not demonstrate that the man is a statesman. Again, too, I want to talk to Alaji Atipapaka. The elections are very coming too close. If Governor Wike is not going to team up, he's not going to surrender, he's not going to work with the majority of people in the PDP, for God's sake, just uh, the abandon Wike and concentrate on your campaigns we, with just one state. And uh, with Okoa by um, uh, the articles aside, I still believe that with the right campaign, with the right strategy, it is still possible for the PDP and Atiku to win the presidency without Governor Wike. And we must realize one thing. Governor Wike cannot dictate to the people of uh, River State that 100% of whoever voter comes out in there must vote for one person or the other. He doesn't have such powers. There are other politicians in there. It's a mere waste of time trying to appease a wiki with regards to whatever ambitions he wants or whatever grievances he may be having. The time is too short for this petty squabble that is happening within the PDP. Well, let's take a look at the Guardian newspaper. Uh, the increment, I think, that's been reflected on all of the papers this morning, but uh, the Guardian, uh, we take, take it from there. Song Wu Lu announces salary increase for workers. What are your thoughts? Some people say that this is, you know, a political strategy. I mean, what a time, what is campaigning and what have you. Well, and so this is what it is. As far as I'm concerned, I hope that is not a Greek gift. Uh, why do I say so? Election is just a few months away, and then the governor is deciding to increase the salaries and wages of civil servants. Whereas, you and I do know, all the civil servants and most people in Nigeria have been crying about the inflationary trends in the country, the rising prices of goods and services, the collapse of uh, infrastructure, and what have you. So, if this is being done with good intentions, why has it not been done before now? And more importantly, too, you will remember, and it was in the paper not too long ago, that the monthly contributions of civil servants into their cooperative account that the governor of Lagos State has gone to confiscate the money and is now using it to service his government. For God's sake, the cooperative is a private affair of the workers in the civil service or wherever they may be. And the cooperative is governed by law. It is not a federal law. It is not a law that is made by the House of Assembly of the Lagos State. So he has no power whatsoever to tamper with whatever funds is in the accounts of the cooperatives of the Lagos State. And Lagos State, again, is the most highly indebted uh, state in the country today. They are said to be owing as much as 789 billion or thereabouts. If a state is owing that kind of a huge amount of money, you begin to wonder where it will get the resources or the money to pay the increases that it's putting on top of the salaries of the civil servants. Something to me is just not, does not gel there. This would appear to me to be a great gift because of the election that is coming. Well, we won't ask the civil servants to reject it. We will encourage them to accept it. But we still call on them to vote for their conscience when the 2023 election uh, is being conducted. All right. Thank you, Kule Kuntunde Kolawale, uh, for that one. Uh, another one that is uh, um, of interest and attracting attention also happens to be uh, the situation with the Nigerian economy. Um, uh, you have the 
Uh, for instance, uh, the central bank uh, uh, governor um, talking about the rise in, in disruptive banking technologies. Now, these are the companies who are using technology to, um, to make banking easier and more accessible to most people out there. And uh, he's saying that uh, the deposit, you know, taking financial technology companies, we call fintechs, must be capitalized with 25 billion naira. I know that uh, some of these uh, companies are really quite uh, not too big. Um, and that space, if you look at a cryptocurrency and every other thing, you know, they've been uh, at the receiving end of some very harsh uh, policies by the Central Bank of Nigeria and the government in general. Um, but he, he's saying they need 25 billion naira to be capitalized. Um, do you feel that some of the things that are being said maybe are necessary to, to protect Nigerians' funds? Or do you go with the, school, with the thought that um, maybe this is more of the harshness of uh, the CBN and the federal government to uh, some of these financial technology companies that are just coming up and trying to make uh, a, a headway? Well, it, it is in the nature of human beings eh, to resist the change. Uh, most times, Human beings have a phobia for new technology. But the truth of the matter is that uh, there are a whole lot of uh, disruptive technologies out in there that we as human beings must find ways and means to cope with. Look at uh, the robotics. You have all sorts of robots now that can wash dishes, that can serve people in their hotel rooms and all that, such that the work of waiters in the hotels is at the receiving end now is dwindling. Furthermore, artificial intelligence is also there. For me, I don't see the arrival of this technology as um, something to start uh, brooding about. Rather, we should find ways and means by which we can marry them with the old technologies to be able to serve man for the comfort of man. Anybody who is making laws, who is putting policies in place to so restrict the invasive nature or the pervasive nature of all these new technologies is merely wasting his time, mm. knocking his head against the wall. If Nigeria will not go in the direction of the new technology, the rest of the world will go in that direction, and we are going to be left behind. So the CPM people, rather than trying to cripple the, impact, the effect and the intrusion of all these new technology into the banking system, they should find ways and means to incorporate them into the, our financial uh, uh, sector. That is the way to go, because more and more technologies will still be coming on board. Let's give this hypothetical example. Initially, what we used to have was a radio, and then when television came, a lot of people were apprehensive that uh, radio will die off, television will not make the kind of impact it used to have. But lo and behold, both are still thriving side by side. I suspect that these new technologies, like Karl Marx had predicted a long time ago, nobody can stop it. All right. What we can only do is to adapt it with the old technology mm -hmm. and make it to serve man. Serve humanity for the better. Okay, Tunde Kolole, please, please permit me to just uh, add to that uh, the yes. fact that the papers are also saying uh, the World Bank is, is, is reducing its pro projections for Nigeria's GDP growth. Um, also, talking about the slowing down of the Nigerian economy, uh, particularly it, the reason the World Bank has given the papers have carried this story today happens to be the uh, underperforming oil sector of the nation's economy, the underperforming all sector of the nation's economy. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Because we have people in charge of the oil sector who were there before, Timothy Press Silva. He's been in the Minister of uh, um, Petroleum before he even became governor of Bielsa State. Mohamed Buhari, president, who is the de facto Minister of Petroleum Resources, was um, before now in charge of a particular section of mm -hmm. the oil and gas industry as far as the government regulatory uh, agency is concerned. Um, but we are faced with an underperforming. We're not even able to fulfill the potential to start with in a time when Nigeria needs the, the, the resources the most. Well, that is the tragedy of the Nigerian nation. We are now do know Nigeria is a mono economy. It is a rental economy. 
Once we are unable to dig oil and sell in the international market, our economy suffers for it. A simple technology of refining of petroleum products, we also have not been able to master it. So that the little money that we earn, selling crude petroleum products, we again use it to import refined products, which run into trillions of naira. All these are drainages on the nation's economy. The solution to the Nigerian economy is really to catalyze the productive base of that economy and also to diversify the economy into so many areas. This money we have mentioned, artificial intelligence, we have mentioned robotics and what happens. Nigeria is coming to and sleeping in that area. Also look at the alternative energy sources, clean energy sources. Nothing is also happening in that area. We are depending on gas, we are depending on hydro technology, we are depending on uh, gas to fire all our energy plants. In other countries of the world, so many revolutionary um, uh, technologies have been injected into that area. So, again, even more worrisome, the restlessness in the Niger Delta has made it difficult for most of the oil companies to perform to their maximum capacity. In fact, most of them are pulling out of Nigeria because drilling oil in Nigeria today is not a too profitable thing. You have the local community con to contend with. You have the pirates to co contend with. You have the corruption in the government circles to, con to contend with. And of course, too, the cost of uh, uh, producing this oil in Nigeria, when compared to what is happening in the other parts of the world, is on an astronomical level. So most people, when they invest, they are looking towards making a profit. You cannot make that profit in Nigeria with the way situations are today. Ordinarily, we should be smiling to the bank today because of what is happening between Ukraine and, uh, and Russia. Because oil is in the high demand in the international market, and we should be taking advantage of that. But because we are not organized at home, because of the disruptive nature of our own oil sector, we cannot take advantage of some of these things. You look at this situation. A Jumbo contract of, I think, about four billion has just been awarded to Mr. Tompolo and a few other persons in the Niger Delta. What does that tell you? That the whole Nigerian army, the whole Nigerian navy, the whole Nigerian civil defense, the whole Nigerian police cannot secure the oil sector of the Nigerian economy so that we have to give it to an individual. The implication of that is that that main state actor is more powerful, is more organized, he is in better command of the means of uh, well, uh, violence than even the conventional or the regular state actors. So everything is just um, uh, not working fine for Nigeria. Tunde. And the reasons are not far fetched. Right, when the nation is corrupt, every part of his body will be sick or diseased. Mm. Tunde, uh, let's talk about yeah. uh, the concerns of the vice president on the Punch newspaper at the NDA convocation. Uh, the vice president is advocating or advocates local manufacturing of arms and ammunition. And you have mentioned the issue of, you know, the failure of the air, the, the Navy and what have you to secure, you know, the pipelines. But I'd like to ask you, don't you think that this is you know, putting the cart before the horse now, in terms of priority? Well, it should be. The vice president has been saying a lot of beautiful things with regards to local manufacture and what ordinarily should be happening in the other sectors of the Nigerian economy. But you ask yourself, this government has just about say, six months or they are about to leave office. What have they been doing? with all these beautiful ideas that they have not been implementing them since they got to power about, about seven and a half years ago, for me, whatever they say now is mere sloganeering, something to bring the vote or to rally the voters behind them come 2023 election. Unfortunately, that is already too late. A nation that will be talking about research will not be doing what it's doing to the university system and to the academicians in those universities. A nation that wants to develop and that wants to see good things happening with R&D, that is research and development, 
would have been, been investing money in all the research institutes in the country. But I challenge you to go and check. All the research institutes in Nigeria today, they are comatose. They are not being financed. In fact, the embargo on strike before us, but nobody is listening to them. Most of them are still on strike uh, today. So for me, the vice president was also, by the constitution, put in charge of the Nigerian economy. And if he has been put in charge of the Nigerian economy, and the economy is wobbling and fumbling the way it is doing today, and dwindling, like the World Bank has said, I don't think it lies in the heart of the vice president to begin to say some of the things that he said. He has better say that to the Marine. I say all this with due respect and apology. I have been totally, well, I feel totally disappointed that the president has mismanaged the Nigerian economy because the only constitutional responsibility given to them under the Nigerian constitution. If blames are going to be mentioned in, or are going to be apportioned in the future, especially with regard to the performance of the Nigerian economy, it's not impossible that the vice president we get a very big stick. Well, uh, so um, one would be thinking, I mean, in all of this that you're saying, uh, there's a lot of thoughts around whether or not uh, we understand that there are security concerns in the country. But what if we focus our attention, you know, in, in producing the economy, in manufacturing, for instance, let's start with food and the things that we consume. And just maybe if we're able to solve a certain problem, it would just go away to address a little bit of the, you know, security concerns that we're faced with at the time. So you say uh, we'll pay attention in manufacturing our foods, what we're consuming, and less importation. And let's see what happens if crime and criminality will not reduce. I'm not saying would vanish, but maybe reduce. Uh, well, that's where that question came from. But uh, I'm sure that... Uh, you know, the relevant stakeholders are paying attention to this? Well, it's too late for them to pay attention to it. You and I do know most countries of the world, they don't joke with their food security. I'll give you one example. A friend of mine in India told me that on an annual basis, the Indian government have a strategic reserve of food that can last the whole country for six months. If the whole farmers in India, for one reason or the other, are unable to farm, they have a strategic reserve. If there is war that will last the whole population of India for at least six months, what efforts have we made in that direction to make sure that um, we have adequate strategic food reserves that we are unable to feed our people? And that whatever we also produce in the farms, like tomato, like onion, like peppers, and all that. We process them. We can them. We put them in containers and sell them, not just in Nigeria, but also in the international market. The truth is that because manufacturing is not a tea party, it's a studio process, our allies are not uh, disposed to, to producing anything in Nigeria. Rather, they all want to remain a trader, importing from China, from Turkey, and what have you, and quickly sell in the market, put the money in the, in the bank, and go another round. But that doesn't provide jobs for people in the country. Well, furthermore, you, are, you have mentioned this morning, the banditry that we have in the country, especially in the rural areas, have driven away most farmers from their farms. So how do you produce when the farmers cannot access their land? Furthermore, in the past, especially during the military, there is a conscious policy of the federal government at that period in time, which ensures that the local government invests a percentage of their money on acquiring farming tractors and other farming equipment, which farmers within their environment go to those local governments to hire, to till their soils, to till their soils. Since the return of this evil rule, how much percentage of the local government uh, revenue are being invested in getting agricultural implement seeds and seedlings to the farmers? To the best of my knowledge, no. When we had a windfall in the oil sector and some money was made available to the local government, what they did was to start acquiring vehicles 
and increasing the allowances, whatever allowances of the wife of local government chairman. In fact, if the local government were to be working, as it should be working, because the local government is the closest government to the people, it is also a proper for insecurity. Most of the insecurity that we have in the country today will not be as serious as it is today. But we have um, the gatekeepers of the local government have abandoned their responsibility, not just in terms of food production, but also in terms of ensuring that we have adequate security at the grassroots level. Well, thank you so much, Tunde Kalawale, for sharing your thoughts this morning on it's some of the national issues that's been raised on our papers. Thanks for having me. All right, we'll um, take a break now, and when we return, we'll look at what happened today in history. Of course, um, today being the 5th of October, 2022. And after that, when we return, we dive straight into our first major conversation. Stay with us. <laughs>